Hi, this is Elias Kinesar, and the following demonstration is from my Citrix Zen Desktop 4 training course. So now, how do I configure the actual virtual disk to take advantage of high availability and also take advantage of load balancing? So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the VDisk pool. We're going to right click on Windows 7. We're going to click on Properties. So the first thing you'll notice here is that it's already configured for load balancing. So because we added the second provisioning server, it now automatically defaults to load balance. So what happens in load balancing is once the target devices have the bootstrap file downloaded to them, they can contact one of the provisioning servers in the farm. Once they contact one of the provisioning servers in the farm, it's going to determine which of the provisioning servers has the least load and it's going to direct that particular target device to the least busiest provisioning server that has the VDisk that the target device is requesting and that provisioning server will then stream the VDisk to it that way. Now when you have load balancing enabled, it's just going to load balance among the provisioning servers that are available. Now if you don't want this virtual disk to participate in uh, load balancing but you want it to uh, be specific to a particular provisioning server you can feel free to select that from here where you're just specifying I want it to always stream from PVS01 for example. For the purposes of our example we're gonna keep this at use load balancing and then we're gonna click on edit file properties. So why am I getting an error? Let's go ahead and go through a troubleshooting exercise. What does it mean? Management interface, VDisk properties were lost. What happened exactly? So if we click on OK, and let's go ahead and click on OK out of here, and let's go back up to servers. Let's go into PVS01, properties, and let's go into stores. Do you see a problem here? We're pointing to shared, right? there's nothing in the shared directory. The shared directory was just created for the purposes of the example. So what we need to do is we're gonna go one level up and we're gonna click up here and then let's do the same thing for the write cache even though this doesn't matter as much but just for consistency sake. Click OK. Let's click OK. And let's try this again. Let's go into VDisk pool. Let's go to properties. We still have load balancing selected and haha. <laughs> so this was actually a good exercise. I didn't really plan for this. I could have stopped the video and cleaned it up, but I decided, you know what? Let's go just go through it and see where that leads us. So this gives you an, an idea of how to start thinking about troubleshooting provisioning server. So now that we are back in and we've resolved the issue, we've enabled load balancing on this particular virtual disk, and now we want to enable it for high availability as well. So once you're in the properties of the VDisk, we're going to click on options here, and we're going to select high availability, which means that this particular virtual disk is now participating in high availability. And what does that mean to participate in high availability? So will that mean if, if the provisioning server that's streaming the disk fails, you know, the target device would have to be restarted and then streaming from another provisioning server? Absolutely not. Once you have high availability enabled and you have all the proper storage configuration for your provisioning server and your VDisks configured, what's going to happen is if you lose a provisioning server that is streaming this particular virtual disk, to a target device, that target device is then going to continue to try to connect to another provisioning server that has the VDisk without losing connection and then resume the stream process from that new provisioning server. So what happens is, let's say PVS01 goes down, the target device is now going to contact the remaining servers that are in the farm and say, hey, which one of you has the same virtual disk I need you to start streaming to me? It's going to continue to do that until it finds a provisioning server that has the VDisk and starts streaming back to it. All this while not losing connectivity from the target device perspective. It's still writing to the write cache and so on and so forth. And that's why it's important to have the write cache configured so that the particular target device can continue to write everything that it needs to write in the meantime. So once it finds another provisioning server that's providing that particular virtual disk, it then 
reconnects with that provisioning server and continues the stream process all of this happens very very seamlessly we're going to click on ok we're going to click on ok again now while i changed the configuration of pvs01 and we configured everything properly we have a problem we really don't have true high availability at this point because we have pvs01 that's pointing and let's go into the server and take a look at what's going on so we have pvs01 over here with a store pointing to the d drive where all the files are and we have pvs02 pointing to the shared directory that we've created that doesn't really have any kind of files in it so from a high availability standpoint this is not true high availability so let's go ahead and fix that so what we're going to do is we're going to move the files for that particular virtual disk into the shared directory and configure this properly so what we're going to do is click on cancel we're going to click on start we're going to drag up to computer we're going to double click on the d drive and what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the three files i'm going to take the lock file i'm going to take the pvp and i'm going to take the vhd file and we're going to just do a um, straight move so we're going to cut and we're going to paste them into the shared here and then we're going to click out of here and let's go ahead and configure pvs01 now to point to the proper place click on edit we're going to go into shared and let's also modify the write cache so that it's pointing to the write cache directory let's click on ok so now i have pvs01 pointing to its local disk which is the d drive the shared drive we're going to click on ok and i have pvs02 which is pointing remotely to a centralized repository that we've shared out so i'm going to click on ok and now let's go back into the v disk here and make sure that everything is okay i should not have any issues taking a look at we got a high availability let's click on okay and voila at this point you have the environment properly configured and properly set up for high availability so that if the if a particular target device is streaming windows 7 v disk from pvs01 and you lose pvs01 pvs02 in this case will automatically pick up and continue to service that target device Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.